Hey everyone, today we are going to explore compound components in React. It's an amazing design pattern that can clean up your code, make it more flexible and keep your components simple to use. First, we will explore what problem compound component is solving and then we refactor a code base to a compound component design pattern style. So if you have ever struggled with passing down props or managing complex component, this video is for you. Here you can see in my screen, for example, you have built a custom drop-down menu and it has a button, a list of items and maybe some additional actions like close or reset. Now we'll see in our drop-down component what problem we will face. So as the drop-down grows, the logic for controlling the state becomes tightly coupled inside one component. Props start piling up, making it messy and difficult to manage or customize. So here the pain point is the component grows in the complexity now anytime you want to add a new feature, for example a reset button, you need to modify the core component. And this leads to inflexibility and hard to maintain code, right? So the problem is you are passing props down to control child component, which becomes hard to manage as the component evolves. So if you don't know about the compound component, in a definition language, I could say a compound component is a pattern where components are designed to work together, providing flexibility and customization but without needing to pass tons of props to the parent component. Again, without needing to pass tons of props to the parent component. And that is this problem we are actually facing here, right? Here you can see if we want to show a close button, we need to pass a flag called show close button. If we want to use a reset button, we need to pass up props. For example, you could say show close reset button, right? So here in our old component, we need to pass a lot of props to achieve some of the functionalities or some of the conditional rendering. So that is the problem compound component design pattern solving us, right? Without passing tons of props, we'll be able to achieve the functionalities or conditional rendering. So in a simple term, you can think of a compound components like a Lego block. You have individual pieces, compound that you can work together to create something bigger, but each piece can be customized and reused independently. So now we'll try to solve this old component to a compound component design pattern style. Okay, so in the code sandbox, we have a dropdown.jsx component, right? And you can see the refactor version of the dropdown component, right? And here is our old.jsx and this was the our previous component, right? So here you can see we have a button, we have a dropdown list and we have a button called close, right? These all are in inside this deep component, right? So this is our old dropdown component. Now we have prefactored this dropdown component using the compound component design pattern, right? Here you can see this dropdown is no longer have this button UI list and this close button. It is now receiving a children here. You can see we are receiving the children as a props, right? So there could have a lot of children, right? What we did? We have mapped this each children and simply we are rendering these children here inside the drop down, right? Previously, it was a lot of things button, drop down list, and close button, and you could add this reset button also, right? So now in a refactor version, we have removed e everything from here and we are receiving children as a props. We are mapping these children and we are rendering each children here. That's it. This is our the first task and we have done it right clearly. Now what we did this button drop down list and this close button right. We have created a separated component here. You can see for the drop down button we have created a simple drop down button component here and it is returning a button. Okay. Right? This is the toggle button. So previously it was uh, the toggle button here right. So we have created a separate component for the drop down button right this is our first children component and here you can see after that we had a list right drop down list so we have created same another component you can see the drop down list so it is receiving items is open on select right and we are simply rendering this ulli here right simple it's a second children component and third one was the close button so we have simply created a simple component which is the drop down close and which is returning a button in a closed text, right? So this is our three children component. So instead of using all of them inside this dropdown, we have created separate component for them, okay? Cool. 
Now, let's try to understand how we use that, right? So here, in app.jsx, you can see, now, this is the dropdown, this is our parent component, right? So now, this dropdown is now a container that manages all the state but it does not care about the specific child component or their behavior clear so now this drop down component does not care about their specific child component or their behavior right it's now a container only handling the state so here you can see uh, when i'm seeing the handling state that means this opens at open is handling the state right and it does not care about the child component you can see whatever we are passing from these props as a children we are actually rendering these things right so that means it does not care about their children component, right? This drop down, cool. Now, this drop down button, drop down list, and the drop down close are child component, as I said, and that work together. But each is independent and can be customized or replaced without touching the main drop down logic. So let's try to understand what is the advantage we will get to using this compound component design pattern. So we'll get a couple of advantages here. First one is the reusability. So here, now each child component can be reused in different places, making your code more modular, right? And the flexibility, you can add or remove child component without changing the core logic of the parent, right? So if you just remember our, the parent component dropdown is now container, it was handling all the state. It does not care about the child component, right? We can add or remove child component, right? From the dropdown. And third one is the separation of concern. So now each part of the component does its own job, keeping logic clean and isolated, right? And the fourth one is improved customization. Now the developer can decide how to structure the compound components without needing to modify internal logic. So when I'm talking about the flexibility, right? So let's see an example how we can actually achieve the flexibility, right? See, as I said, if we need to use this dropdown component in 10 different places, and if you have more additional logic to add for example, reset button, close button, and I mean, there could have uh, lots of other requirement to use in the in the dropdown, right? So now, for example, in our app.js, whenever we will use, we need to add a reset button here, right? Now, how we will handle this one, right? When I'm talking about, we need to add a dropdown, uh, I mean, a reset button, that means it it means the flexibility of the of our component, right? So let's see how we can add a reset button without touching any core logic of the dropdown component, right? Now, what we did? First, we sent a couple of children here. For example, first, we have sent dropdown button. So this dropdown button is coming from here, right? It's now isolated, right? So we can send it as a dropdown, a children here inside that. So we, we have sent a dropdown button, we have sent dropdown list, we have sent dropdown close button, right? Now, the additional requirement, we need to add a drop-down reset button, right? But there is no drop-down reset button here, right? So these, for example, you could say these are the core uh, three component, right? Uh, this drop-down button, drop-down list, and drop-down close, right? Now, if I want to add one more additional button, what we can do? We can simply create a component here. So you can see I have created a simply drop-down reset component here, right? So this is my component I have created now, right? So now I can send this drop down reset component to the drop down component, right? Simply I have banded this drop down reset, right? With the on reset functionalities. Now, since we are we are actually sending as a children, right? So now our drop down will receive it and simply render it. So as I said, it does not care about the child component. Whatever we are passing as a children, it will render the component to the UI. You can simply check like how flexible our drop down component is now after you know using the compound component design pattern. I hope I explained it clearly. To sum it up, compound components make your React code more flexible, reusable, and easier to maintain. Instead of cramming everything into a single component, you can break things down and let each part do this own thing. Try it out in your project and let me know in the comments how you find using compound components. So that's it. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more React tips and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. See you in the next time. Thank you for watching this video.